Hey guys, in this video I'll show you Tizen OS 6.5 on Samsung's 2022 TV. This is Samsung's QN90B Ultra HD 4K TV running this operating system. And here I'll show you menus, settings and some tips along the way. So let's dive in into the latest version of Tizen OS. After many years we have Tizen OS home menu over the entire screen, so when you press home button on your remote you will be greeted with this menu. Here we have line with apps and inputs, which you can customize in a way that if you long press certain icon you have option to move it or to remove it. If you press move you can move it to the position you prefer. You can also do the same with this edit list button and if you want to install more apps you have this apps button. Below is a recent input button so you can quickly jump to the last input that you had but this does not include apps. So Netflix, uh, HBO Max and similar no only inputs like live TV or HDMI. Below we have line from Netflix showing recommended content to watch on that platform, then Prime Video, HBO Max, Disney Plus and then the last icon is to bring you back to the top. And now that we are back on the top you see this text, explore your favorite content quickly and easily. It's nice when you see it once or twice, but now I've been testing this TV for two weeks. You know, I'm no longer seeing it, I'm just focusing on the apps and I'm wondering why do I need to see this text? Why is it occupying that big portion of the screen? Maybe in some regions you will see ads or something else distracting here. But here I selected country Croatia where I'm located and this is how my home menu looks like. Now let's see the menu on the left. So it starts with privacy choices, search, ambient, media and menu. And menu offers different options, settings with additional icons down here. Connected devices where you can access smart things, live TV, HDMI inputs, network locations, workspace, connection guide and universal remote. And finally we have multi view where you can combine two inputs on one screen and there are different combinations you can have and also different layouts. Is it picture in picture or picture side by side? Okay, now let's go back to home menu and I'll open apps that you see which apps are available. So here we have this placeholder, discover your favorite video apps and then editor's choice, of course recommended and provided by Samsung apps, then editor's choice, what's new, downloaded apps and here you have different groups. For example, if we go with genre video, let's see which apps are available. Some more popular than the other. Still, we don't have Kodi or VLC player. I know many people are a fan of those apps on Android TV. But you can always connect Android TV stick to this TV and then benefit from overall quite fast and responsive and stable Tizen OS built in the TV, built into the built in the TV, built built in in the TV and from additional apps offered by Android TV platform. Games, let's see which games are available. Twitch, GeForce Now and then some simple games here. 
And if we want to install, for example, this one, you see details and screenshots, you press install and that's it. You need to be logged in in Samsung account in order to install the apps. And you see once the app is installed, you have option to add it to home, which will now bring us back to home so you can position it where you want in the list. Now, if I press small button with gear icon on the remote, you can quickly access this menu with different options. And if I go down, then I will see numerical keyboard on screen and further down is info button and these colored teletext buttons. Now let's go to all settings that you see which settings are available. So picture, sound, connection, broadcasting, general and privacy and support. Picture menu I covered in my separate video. Now if we see sound, sound output, different options available. If you are using HDMI E ARC or ARC connection, you will only see it once it is available. You will not see it uh, in this case when receiver is not connected. Sound mode game, uh, Wi-Fi speakers are on setup, expert settings, here we have balance, equalizer, HDMI EARC mode, digital output audio format, different options, Dolby Atmos, you can enable it here, auto volume, sound feedback, simultaneous optical output, and reset sound. Connection, here you see device name, network options, external device manager where you can enable HDMI CC control, input signal plus, input device manager for connecting Bluetooth devices, keyboards and mice, and device connection manager where you can see the list of connected devices and so on. Game mode settings, Apple AirPlay settings. Broadcasting for digital video broadcasting, different options. General and privacy accessibility. You see here picture off and different options, including multi audio output. If you want to output sound from built-in speakers and also from Bluetooth connected device at the same time. Terms and privacy, intelligent mode settings with different options. Voice commands, how to wake up Bixby voice assistant. In this case, I have set this high Bixby option, so I don't need to use the remote. And next we have system manager with different options and here you can access your Samsung account or add another one. Parental settings, which options are available, channel lock and app lock settings, so you can lock certain apps if you want. Power and energy saving, you see which controls are available. Here you can also see solar remote battery status, currently at 55%. Start screen options, do you want to start with Smart Hub Home, Auto Run Multi View Casting, so these options, and also Auto Run Last App when you turn on the TV and reset all settings to factory defaults. Finally, support offers software update menu where you can see currently installed version. Device care where you can uh, diagnose if something is not working properly, if you're suspecting something. You can also clear storage here. Connection guide, remote control guide, open e-manual, so online instructions, remote management, 
And finally about this TV where you can see model code, serial numbers, software version and so on. Okay, now let's see the speed of the platform. So I'll open Netflix. Then go back to home menu. Oh, let's go to PlayStation 5 input. Working fine. Let's open Prime Video. Prime Video loading. Browse videos. And we see new interface. Great. Then HBO Max, HBO Max loading. And here we are, so, okay. Now let's use quick launch buttons, Disney Plus. Okay, here we are. Then web browser. Let's open one of the featured apps. Okay, now I'll go to home menu and turn off the TV. Now let's turn on the TV. Okay, we're back to home menu. Let's open yeah, PlayStation 5 input. Okay, Netflix. Okay, Prime Video. Web browser. So you see it remembered where I stopped. And now let's open remote location on my server and play some HDR video. So I need to go to connected device, caster Troy, video, tests, uh, where is the content? Okay, let's find some HDR 10 content like this. Sony Food Fizzle. And guys, with this, we've come to the end of this demonstration. Thanks for watching. As you can see, Tizen OS is now full screen. It's got many options in many menus. It can be quite confusing at the beginning to find inputs, how to add different apps and so on but with some time you get used to it how it works i hope samsung will add more customization options they should consider definitely making things simpler and other than that during this test i haven't seen any major issues sometimes the the system would stop for a few moments and then continue but I haven't seen any crashes or TV resetting itself. The interface is still in Full HD upscaled to native 4K or 8K depending on version of your Samsung TV so I was expecting to see sharper interface but still Samsung kept it like this probably to keep good performance. Guys, now I would like to hear what you think about the new Tizen OS and I'll catch you soon in my new video. Bye bye.